you've been following our adventures, you'll know that we've run into the limitations of our current battery system on more than one occasion. But how do you go about converting from a single lead acid battery to a lithium bank? Stay tuned, we're going to show you exactly how we did it. Step one for any upgrade is to figure out what pieces you need. Since this is a battery upgrade, we'll first need one or more batteries. Your battery capacity depends very much on what you plan to run, and determining exact number is difficult until you actually measure it. But you can get a rough idea by listing all the appliances you want to use, their wattage, and how many hours a day you'll be running them. For example, if you want to run a 150 watt laptop for 4 hours each day, that's 600 watt hours. Divide this by 12 volts and you'll get 50 amp hours, the measurement unit for most batteries. And a 100 amp hour lithium battery would last you about two days on a single charge. This is a very exciting day. They have finally arrived. These are the heart and soul of our new RV power system. Two 100 amp hour smart lithium batteries. These are going to upgrade our system from being able to just boondock maybe like two or three days with very, very small power usage to being able to go, you know, a week or longer. So this is just great. Each one has something built into it called a BMS or battery management system. That's basically a computer inside the battery that controls the charging and discharging. Now these batteries in particular are shipped in something called shelf mode. That means that there's actually no voltage at either of these terminals right now. It's completely shut down and you need this little thing. Plug it into there. Right now it shows sort of a dim light. Press and hold for a minute and then it goes bright. Now you've got voltage at the terminals and the battery is activated. Now if you're going to store it again, all you got to do, press and hold the button again, goes dim, and it's back into shelf mode. And then you don't have to worry about uh, getting shocked by the battery. The second component you may need is a charge controller that supports a lithium battery charge profile. Different batteries need to be charged differently, and although you can theoretically drop in a lithium battery on an old controller, that won't let you use its full capacity. If you have a fairly new rig, your converter may already support lithium, but our 2016 converter did not. You can also purchase an upgraded converter, but we opted to get a separate charge controller so we could tie in shore, solar, and alternator charging with one device. This is a Renogy 50 amp DC to DC battery charger, and it comes with built-in MPPT solar charging as well. So this is essentially going to be the brains of the whole operation. But this one looks fairly easy to open. Let's see what's inside. Got a manual, wires, and then the actual unit itself. It's a decent size. It's pretty heavy too. This is some solid metal. That is a huge heat sink. Now this is super handy because it's basically like two devices in one. It's a DC to DC charger and an MPPT solar charger. Normally this would be two separate devices, but it's all in one box and it has a port for the uh, smart monitoring as well. So you can hook that up to Bluetooth and monitor with an app. In theory, we could monitor this from the truck while we're driving. You'll also need a battery monitor. Lithium batteries don't indicate their charge state through their voltage like other batteries, so you'll want a battery monitor that essentially counts what you use versus what you put back in. Had to use some scissors, but now I think I can finally get into the battery monitor box. Pretty long control wire, that's good. This thing, which is called the shunt, that hooks up in between your battery and your charger, that is uh, pretty hefty. And then the monitor itself, which is not that hefty at all. Now this here is what I'm going to connect to this, which is our battery monitor. Now this is going to monitor exactly how much power is in both of our batteries and show us our current usage and approximately how much power we have left. You'll need some fuses and wires as well. Your new battery bank should have a fuse connected to the positive terminals and high current devices like inverters should also be fused to prevent damage in the event of a short. And this here is called an ANL fuse. It's going to be hooked up directly to the battery in case anything goes wrong with the system. If there's a short, it's going to protect the equipment and the wires 
this fuse will blow and just cut everything off instead of damaging the equipment. And this is a smaller fuse because I need to run a line from this directly to the positive on the battery. I was thinking, oh yeah, just hook it up. But my brother, who is very well versed with electronics, said, you know what? Anything like that, you wanna have a fuse on it, just to be safe. The wiring can be tricky. You'll need to assess your rig for the wire length, then look online to determine how thick of gauge wire you'll need for the length and expected current. Switches are also highly recommended. Although not required, it's very useful to be able to turn off your battery or charging device when troubleshooting or reconfiguring. So this is the battery cutoff switch. Again, another good safety feature. If there's something going wrong, you just turn it from on, off, solve all your problems. Finally, if you want to use devices that plug into regular household 110 volt power, you'll need an inverter. Be sure to get a pure sine wave inverter if you plan to use electronics. Modified sine wave inverters are cheaper, but can damage things like laptop adapters and battery chargers. To figure out the inverter size, simply add up the wattage of all the devices you plan to use at the same time, then add a safety factor of an additional 10 to 20%. This is our inverter. So this is what will convert our 12 volt battery power into 110 volt AC that we can use to like charge our laptops and plug kind of normal things in. Give you the connector wires, give you a remote switch. Oh, this thing's actually pretty big. So it's a 700 watt inverter. And this will let us charge, you know, like both of our laptops at the same time, but it won't run a microwave. All we really want is to be able to use our computers out when we're boondocking, this should do quite nicely. And how much does all of this cost? That varies a lot depending on brands and capacities. We've linked a full list of everything we purchased and the costs in the video description below. Did you know that lithium batteries need above freezing temperatures to charge? So it's best to put them in a heated area in your rig. You'll also need space for a charger and an inverter. So this begs the question, where do you put everything? So we can see that the converter and the electrical stuff is like way, way in back there. So not easy to access from over here, but it looks like it has a fair bit of space over there. So, I mean, looking promising so far. This is where the main converter is. And I'm thinking to try and install the charger and the batteries as close to this as possible, just to minimize current loss and minimize the length of wiring that we're gonna have to run. So I mean, there's a good amount of space in there, but it's also like right beside the hot water heater, right underneath the sink. I mean, there's a lot of water potential there. And I can see that the converter has actually been mounted uh, up from the floor. If anything, if we're gonna use this location, uh, there's no way we would put everything right on the floor. It would have to be mounted up a little bit at least. To mount the charger, I'm actually thinking there's a bunch of space right above this uh, drawer here and building a little shelf there might actually be a nice spot for it. And for the batteries themselves, I am kind of thinking in behind the converter and just build like a little shelf to bring them up maybe two inches from the ground. It's really close to where the power needs to be, but safety first. Make sure if you're doing anything like this, turn off your AC power, make sure you're completely unplugged, and also find the battery disconnect for your trailer and make sure all of your 12 volt is completely disconnected. So they've got a bus bar that's screwed into the floor and just a metal kind of strap thing to hold all the AC wires together. So I can see these white and red wires come up from the inverter here. So this is changing the AC power to DC. And then I can see these like really thick red and white cables and those go to the battery. Kind of need a third hand here. But I can see here, I've really only got about 12 inches from the wall to what I'm gonna need clearance for 
And I mean, in terms of the length, you can just measure across there. So that's like two feet. So I've got about a two by one section because we got to look at like vertical space now too. That gas line's only got about 10 inches, but you know, given the alternatives, I think this is still the place. So yeah, after looking at all this, I'm still pretty convinced that this is the best place in the RV to put the batteries and the charger. It's not necessarily gonna be easy, but I think all of the other places would, would actually be harder. So our new batteries have just arrived and we're very excited about getting our new power system into the RV. But first, we wanna test each of our components and make sure they actually work before we install them. So what I'm gonna do here first is activate the batteries and just do a quick check with a voltmeter just to make sure they're actually showing current. Positive and negative, 13.29 volts. Seems good. So the batteries are alive. So the next thing I'm gonna do is test out our inverter. All right, we're hooked up. Now we should get something to test out the load. Hair clippers. Because hey, when you're boondocking, you might need to clip your hair, right? My hair is getting super long, so, you know, this might be necessary pretty soon. Let's first of all just turn this on, make sure like nothing terrible happens. Beeps. It's a good sign. Let's see if we can clip some hair. So now I know, battery's good, inverter's good. Let's test some other stuff. So this is where things get a little bit complicated, and I have to start referring to my diagram, which is not all that simple either. But here's the basics. This here is called the charge controller, and this is what's going to take power coming in from either shore power, or the truck's alternator, or solar power, and it's going to take the voltage and amperage and figure it all out so that it gives the right amount of power to the battery to charge it optimally. So I've got even more stuff laid out here. One important component of this system is going to be this fan here because all of these things are gonna be in a somewhat enclosed area and electronics are very heat sensitive, so it's good to have a fan to just keep that airflow going and not get it too hot. Whew. It's nice and cool. So now all that's left to do is actually hook everything up. So now I'm gonna set the battery type to lithium. It's indicated by a blue light. And I'm gonna switch on the battery cutoff. Hey look, 13.2 volts. So I've got the manual out. Can't quite figure out why it's not charging. This is why you hook it up on a desk first before you hook it up in your trailer. So it pays to read the manual carefully. To charge from the alternator, you need at least 13.2 volts and my little charger here only has 12.6. So I've got to find something with a little bit higher voltage. I had to give Mel's desk back, so I'm a bit relegated to the floor right now, but great news. I was able to get an AC adapter that has changeable voltages, and I plugged it in, set it to 13.5 volts, and boom, batteries are charging, Everything is working as they should, so now I am fully confident in all the equipment working, and now I'm ready to get to the next step of actually installing it in the trailer. It's pretty exciting that we have all the components set up and running, but we have a lot more work to do. Oh yeah, so join us for part two, where we get to use power tools to build shelves and mount everything and wire everything up in the trailer. <laughs> more power! <laughs> and if you have any questions about the components or how they all work together, please let us know in the comments and we'll answer as best we can. And if you found this video useful, we'd really appreciate if you gave us a like, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and share the video with your friends. 
It really helps us get this video and our other content out to other viewers just like you. Thanks. And in the meantime, keep, keep on, on living, living the, the life you've, you've imagined. imagined. And an MPP, MPPT, our power situation, than our current situation. We know, okay. We know that, why can't I say it? <laughs> okay, in three, two.